Asian markets mostly in the red after a tumultuous week. Protesters take to Bangkok streets demanding the PM resign. Claim civilians targeted by an airstrike in Afghanistan. And a Titanic survivor's mementos to go under the hammer. Good evening, Philippa Meekin with ABC News for Australia Network. Asian share markets remained cautious today after yesterday's massive falls across the region. With continuing worries about the worsening global economy, the Nikkei made up some ground, but shares in South Korea and Hong Kong were firmly in the red. A million Brits immigrated in the decades after World War II, among them Australia's shadow health minister Julia Gillard. In 1966, aged five, her family ventured into the unknown, moving from Barry to Adelaide. Hello. So you're from Wales, but you're Australian. How do you balance the two? Well, I think it's part of you to know where you're from and to have that sense of where you were from. And of course, knowing that your mum and dad migrated literally halfway around the world to give you a better life, I think has always placed a bit of an obligation on me and my sister to live up to that and to make the most of the opportunities Australia's given us. Well, our reporter Philippa Meekin is at a school in New Tradiga. Philippa. Well, Lucy, the children here at White Rose Primary School are tucking into their lunches and they seem to be enjoying it. Lots of smiling faces and indeed empty plates. Well, the school and catering staff have done an awful lot to encourage healthy eating. Amongst initiatives, they've got a tuck shop it's just selling fruit twice a week. It's so popular, it's sold out today. Coming up in Wales this lunchtime, E. coli report reducing the risk of another outbreak. Plus, will Welsh Liberal Democrats back their leader after his frank admission? That's all to come, but first this lunchtime, a report into the South Wales E. coli outbreak has made 22 recommendations to reduce the risk of it happening again. Well, Tara, for more than a week, health officials have been saying that the worst is over, that the outbreak is in decline. Well, today, the terrible news that a five-year-old boy being treated for E. coli has died. Australia is vast. When you want to get from one side of the country to the other, you drive, you fly, or you get the train. Skate it. Well, that's just crazy, isn't it? A challenge it might be, but Dave Cornthwaite with his longboard Elsa is notching up the miles doing just that, aiming to raise thousands of pounds for charity in the process. But this is no one-man show. Come on, let's meet the team. First of all, we have the fundraisers, the folks that persuade people to part with their hard-earned cash. Then the media girl, to get the media interested in everything that's going on. The driver and security man, not to mention the photographer. There you go, and the cameraman. He's the one filming a documentary. Time now to see what more the weather has in store. Here's Charlie Neal with the forecast. You can see the ship's in need of some TLC. Permission to come aboard. Permission granted. Welcome aboard the Cymru. Take the two pence piece. Issued in 1971, it features three feathers. Now that's the badge of the Prince of Wales. But in more than 30 years, its look has barely changed. You could help redesign it. The Queen's head will remain, but the rest is up to you. Well, I've been working on a design or two. Reckon they'll be impressed. You're watching ABC News for Australian Network. Before we go, let's take another look at the main headlines. A plunge in consumer confidence in the US leads to fears of a deep recession. Four days of intense talks fail to break the deadlock in Zimbabwe's power sharing talks. And that's it from us for this bulletin. I'm Philip Meekin. Thank you for watching. On behalf of the team, goodbye for now.